Hello. Sorry I've been incredibly busy the past couple of days. I got uh, robbed out of $8,000 by the IRS. It was over basically $1,600 more than I was expecting it was going to be. My tax guy said, uh, that's because I didn't have many deductions. It's like, well, isn't that wonderful? So, yeah, I, I got robbed by the government. Um, that's not relative to this video. Sorry about that. I still, <laughs> I still feel uh, <clears throat> discombobulated because of that horrific experience, but that's where I've been for the past couple days. I don't actually like to make videos about anything if there's like a gazillion other videos on the internet about it. But I actually checked out. I always had an enormous amount of requests from people wanting me to talk about electroculture. And I thought there'd be a lot of videos out there discussing it. There are people that have been quite successful at it. But all the descriptions were inexplicably bad. And they'd make like uh, new age uh, woo-woo devices. And they were working, they were making um, a vortex shape to using uh, copper tubing. And of course they're grounded. Some of them were grounded, not all of them were. They were effective. They're basically building, without them knowing about it, uh, Yagi antennas, but they don't need to be complicated like that. They're, you know, making these uh, beautiful uh, golden ratio designs and vortexes and conicals. And p the one that, you know, I was rolling my eyes over is uh, pyramidal shape. And you, that's just a total waste of time making it beautiful or something that's, it, it's just, no, it's absolutely not necessary. I have no connection to New Age stuff or what I call New Age woo-woo. Electroculture actually is real. And I'll actually point you back to videos that I made years and years ago talking about uh, magnetic seed exposure. Over these many years of me discussing that, much of which was based upon Rawls and Davis's experimentation, South Pole exposure, seed, and I've got countless videos on that. At First, when I was talking about that, people said, so there's just no way this would work. I would have heard about this before. It's like, well, you know, this is, you know, Rawls and Davis have a book on this. I said, I've done the experiment endless numbers of time. And since those many years have passed where I was, you know, attacked over that, so to say, many, many, many thousands of you have actually done that experiment. Say, hey, you know, this guy is right. It absolutely does work. The same thing happened when I first started talking about field theory. I would mention dielectricity. And all sorts of people said, well, what the heck is dielectricity? There's no such thing as dielectricity. I said, you know, the greatest minds of field theory vis-a-vis -vis Tesla, Faraday, Steinmetz, and others talked endlessly, you know, the great gods of field theory on this earth. It's not like some sort of imaginary word that I came up with. Also, too, talking about gold extraction, because gold is not uh, ferromagnetic, but everything is magnetoreactive. It actually slowed down baby powder gold in the sluice run by taking advantage of the uh, diamagnetic properties of gold to decelerate out the fine gold such that people would catch it instead of it running out of the sluice run. It's hyperlogical. It absolutely does work. And I would talk about correct orientation. So I'm not interested in any sort of woo-woo stuff. So I had to say that because electroculture superficially does sound like woo-woo or new age, you know, sort of stuff. And if you watch some of the YouTube videos, they are a bit of woo-woo. It's like, hey, you know, I don't know, it works, some people would say, but you get results, and there is results. There's actually three things that you could do as so far as electroculture. One is magnetic seed exposure, South Pole exposure. I've got countless videos on that. The other one is actually using structured water, of course. You know, if you're doing this inside versus outside, you're not going to take advantage of structured water unless you have some sort of system set up, and it's not appropriate for conventional farming where you're relying on mother nature of course to drop out uh, rain on uh, your plants and your veggies and your fruits and whatnot. The other one is dielectric induction. Dielectric induction i.e. what people are calling electroculture is actually hyperlogical but when you superficially look at the YouTube videos you, know, you see all these people making you know uh, vortex shapes at a copper wire and you know you roll your eyes just as I would but there actually is a genuine science empirical a demonstrable value behind it and for example on the seed experiments water is a polar molecule fact a magnet is a polar object I mean I can literally say I wrote the book on magnetism and it is demonstrable thousands of people have done that experiment with seed experimentation 
or also two while they're germinating for more dramatic effects. So um, this is not new age fluffery at all. Electroculture actually does work, but it doesn't require any of the elaborate things that those people are doing. You only need a simplex Yagi array and they need to be grounded into the root system. I don't know if you know what a TENS unit is. Like uh, one guy, uh, for example, is a Hollywood guy, Jeremy Renner. He's a snowmo, a snowplow, not a snowmobile, a snowplow like flipped over on him, he like broke 20 bones or something and you know he hasn't moved for months. I mean he has recently. But uh, you know to get the leg muscles going they put these uh, um, uh, uh, tens unit pads on his leg, actually pulse your muscles. Bruce Lee did that. He said he would get a workout just sitting there on his bed or his couch. You plug in the tens unit and it actually stimulates your muscles. Now, a root system is not a muscle. It kind of is in a sort of way, but not literally. But I'm using an analogy to point out the fact that you actually ground um, these units for dielectric induction to the root system, also two pointing at the plant itself, a Yagi array, and I'll actually talk about what is best. I'm not talking interested in pure theory, but what somebody can actually do, just as I pointed out, seed experimentation is no different than a TENS unit, except you're actually applying this to the plant and also to its root system. It has to be grounded. There's only a few criteria here, and the criteria for that is that the best, by the way, is a, uh, say you have a plot of land, it'd be in your backyard, or a farm. A farm would be a lot more difficult because copper is expensive. It doesn't have to be copper. I have like a two meter Yagi antenna over here. I used to be a ham radio operator, and I've done an enormous amount of research, not only on building antennas, but also, too, on antenna theory. It's just a Yagi antenna array. You can actually build really simple ones like this with uh, director, reflector, driver elements that are actually pointed at the sky that are actually grounded uh, evenly to uh, the grid. So you have like an 8 by 12 uh, rectangular garden in your backyard. Nothing super huge. If you want to use copper, fine. You don't need to use copper. You use aluminum. It needs to be grounded. It needs to be spaced evenly in the... Uh, the, uh, the garden that you have. They shouldn't all be grounded in the same spot. If you have an antenna system and you're trying to ground the antenna, for example, like on a radio array, you're only interested in grounding out so that you have really good uh, SNR, signal to noise ratio. When you're actually grounding on a garden or a plant system, I'm sure, assuming it's not one plant, some of these people will do it just three or four plants, you stick it in the middle of the three or four plants, for example, that's fine, but if you actually have a garden, they need to be evenly spaced. So the grounding needs to be in the root system and it uh, needs to be evenly spaced for the grounding to be effective so that it affects all plants to the best possible uh, availability. The best would be a large square or, square or circular uh, Yagi array. Now the Yagi array doesn't have to be like this. There's actually loop Yagi, loop Yagi antennas that uh, actually have maximum gain. So you're using very little copper because copper is expensive. So is aluminum wire. Not really. Depends on how big the garden it is. These people are actually making complex. My point being that all these electroculture things they're talking about on YouTube, even though they're getting drastic results, they're creating complex systems that don't need to be created for the implementation of electroculture. This doesn't have that much aluminum in it. This is a two meter Yagi. Look up uh, what a Yagi antenna is and the elements of a Yagi. The connect, they don't actually have to be like this. You used to see this on top of people's antennas back in the day. They'd be for UHF, VHF. TV reception, but they can be loop Yaggies. Uh, this is a reflector element. This is the driven element. You can actually see the coax here. Now, in the case of electroculture, you'd actually take RG58, which would be the cheapest. You don't need anything more than RG58. You're not trying to receive radio signals here. You're actually trying to create dielectric induction into the plant system. The RG58, you can actually see the coax connector right here. This is the driven element. Now, the driven element is not only, you're not transmitting anything in the case of electroculture. You're trying to receive. The driven element should also be called, you know, for simplex of communication to you in electroculture, since this is all you're interested in watching this video for, is the reception uh, for dielectric induction to the root system, also two of the plant system. This would be pointed at the sky. Say you had an 8 by 12 garden, for example. You can make loop yaggies, and you can make these yourself. Now, this is a really simple thing. This is literally three pieces of aluminum. It's a slightly more complicated than that. You solder the RG58 to it. You could even tie it on there. If you don't know how to solder, don't have a soldering iron, of course, soldering anything to aluminum is nearly impossible. You could actually tape 
the, uh, you strip off the coax, you take the grounding shield and the center conductor to the driven element, you're not transmitting anything. This is a two meter transceiving Yagi antenna for maximum gain. Look up Yagi antenna. Anybody could build a Yagi antenna by going to Home Depot or Har the only thing you would need is some aluminum or some copper tubing to create either a loop Yagi or a straight limb Yagi like this. Uh, depending on how big your garden is, 50 foot of RG58 cheap, cheap coax cable, which should run you like 30 bucks. So for a total of 50 bucks, you could take care of a large garden. You don't have to create expensive, complicated uh, things like they create, uh, show you in the electroculture uh, videos. Um, a spiral, by the way, the, the people were actually showing you these, uh, these uh, vortex of copper. A spiral or a vortex out of any material, be it copper or aluminum, is nothing other than a Yagi. A, a, a vortex of copper that a lot of these electroculture videos are is nothing other than a complex loop Yagi. Yeah, some of those are not even grounded. So they're actually directing for dielectric induction on the plant, but not into the root system. The maximum, uh, the maximum, and by the way, you know, you can roll your eyes at this video all you want, but a lot of people did that when I was talking about magnetic seed exposure. And thousands and thousands of you have duplicated that experiment successfully. And I didn't think it would work, but I, you know, I believed you because you weren't selling anything. And I did it, and it works amazingly. And my son is amazed, my wife is amazed. So it needs to be grounded. So you're taking the RG58 off the driven element. Doesn't matter if it's straight limb Yagi or a, uh, a loop Yagi. You're actually grounding that evenly. Uh, like say on an 8x12 garden, for example, we're a little bit larger than that. That'd be a typical family garden. You'd have the, uh, the Yagi pointing in, in uh, like this corner, it'd be pointing this way up in the sky, this corner. You could actually point it directly up. It would make no difference for dielectric induction. The actual ground would be spaced evenly into the garden, so you would not have all the Yagi antennas dropping into the same spot in the same ground. Then you're only affecting one concentrated area, so it would be evenly spaced for the ground. Um, it doesn't matter whether you mount them on uh, metal poles or wooden poles, you're not talking about radio signals. You're only talking about dielectric induction for stimulating plant and fruit and vegetable growth. Uh, you know, everything in my head on antennas is uh, regarding SNR issues, which you would not want to use metal on an antenna, especially that close to the ground, but you're only talking about receiving. You're not transmitting anything. We're not talking about ham radio here. Just simplex antennas. So it needs to be grounded. It needs to be grounded near the root systems, yet evenly distributed. Um, like I said, a spiral is just a Yagi antenna. By the way, uh, this is a reflector. This is the driver. And uh, this is the uh, director receiver. Anywhere this is pointed where the reflector is back here is for transmission or reception. You would actually point this as a source. Remember when they put uh, radio transceiver collars on bears and they'd try to locate them? Uh, they'll send out a little beep like a bear or an endangered animal. Wherever you had the maximum signal reception is wherever this is pointed to. This is actually a directional lobal antenna based upon antenna theory. So these, in the case of electroculture, would be pointed directly up at the sky or no greater than 45 degrees relative to the ground plane. So nothing more uh, drastic than this. So say at a rectangular garden, uh, four of these at all four corners, you only really need three. Depends on how large the garden is. Like an 8x12, you'd only need three Yagi antennas. Some people would find it harder to make this than it is a loop Yagi. The central shaft here doesn't need to be metal at all. It can be wooden. There have been many, many, many Yagi antennas made with the central shaft where the reflector, director, and driver are attached to a piece of wood. And that's actually the simplest way. Like a tobacco stick, for example. I got like thousands of those in my barn. I don't know if you know what a tobacco stick is. You place the copper or aluminum here. You would need, you would need uh, this RG58 uh, or this coaxial uh, screw-on connector, this on this professional two-meter uh, Yagi antenna. You would just need to strip off the conductor and the shielding of an RG58 coax and wrap it around. Don't have to solder it. Only needs to be contact. Soldering is best. But if you don't know how to solder, and then the RG58 is grounded. Uh, evenly spaced to the root system, depending on the size of your garden, whether it's circular or rectangular. Um, the dielectric induction actually helps the root system grow. Um, 
Also, too, uh, electroculture plants uh, require roughly uh, between 20 and 30 percent reduction in fertilizer uptake. What it actually does is no different analogously to a TIN system used on a muscle. Now, that's not a perfect analogy, but it, it makes people understand. Also, too, since water is a polarized molecule, yeah, same reason why the magnetic seed exposure experiments works perfectly. It actually helps an osmotic uptake in the root system of the plant, not only of the water, but also too in the minerals. By causing dielectric induction into the plant system, yeah. If you told people 30 years ago, or maybe 40, since curly in photography existed back then, like you could take a leaf and do curly in photography of a leaf, it's like, okay, you see this electrostatic field around a leaf. You could cut the leaf in half and throw away the tip of the leaf and stick it underneath the glass plate and do more curly in photography, and you would still see the missing tip of the leaf. Go look that up. Type in curly in photography and leaf, for example. I have no interest or connection to new age woo woo. Yeah? Woo-woo, you know, like tinfoil hat quackery, you know? Electroculture is real. There's palpable, empirical, demonstrable science behind same. It's the same reason why magnetic seed exposure... You never heard about magnetic seed exposure in high school or college or from any farmer that you know. You probably also didn't hear about electroculture. Electroculture is proven to work. There's even demonstrable... Here's one from a diagram from a long, long time ago. This is hooked up to, uh, I think, an electrostatic generator where the guy is actually watering his plants and the water is hooked up uh, to um, an electrical generator. Here's another one where he's actually using a, a bucket pail and you can't see the cord back behind it, but there's an example there. So this has been known about for a long time. This is not like recent new age quackery of any uh, variety, but this is no more quackery than magnetic seed exposure. Everybody that's done that experiment has reported back like, wow, I can't believe this works. It works drastically. But the stuff that you do see with the really elaborate devices on various YouTube channels, like they are doing electroculture, but they're, they're, they're wasting time and money and material, creating elaborate, beautiful-looking geometric structures. You don't need that. You only need a Yagi array. Yeah? You could actually, on a simple garden, you could actually make a singular Yagi array. It would have to have three elements. You'd actually put up four wooden stakes at the corner of a rectangular garden, for example. You could have a large Yagi, which, uh, excuse me, a smaller Yagi, which would be uh, the, uh, the director receiver. You'd have a driven element, which would be grounded. You'd actually could split up the coax cable, go off the center conductor and the shielding into, into four or three evenly placed spots relative to the root system, whatever plants are in your garden. And then you'd actually have a, um, a uh, reflector element. You have a reflector. It would have to be a three-element loop Yagi, except it would actually be shaped like a triangle. So the larger element would be at the, the bottom closest uh, to the plant system, then the driver element, and then the, um, the, the director receiver at the top, the driven element, and the reflector element closest to the ground. Excuse me. I'm thinking about 10 things at once. Sorry about that. So it needs to be grounded. It needs to be grounded near the root system. The only thing you need to create is either a circular uh, uh, loop Yagi two or three of them, depending on the size of the garden and how many plants are in there, a, uh, a, uh, a box or rectangular Yagi, like the one I just described a few seconds ago. This is a little bit harder for people. It's much easier to create a staked loop Yagi because it's not moving. This is actually Yagi that's meant to be directed. It's like I'm talking to this repeater over here. It's pointed in that direction because it's actually lobal. It's actually directional. Yagi antenna is directional. I want to use another repeater, and they're actually these are put up on antenna masts that are actually are on a rotor, so you can actually turn it over here for better SNR signal to noise ratio gain reception. But you're not interested in any of that as far as electroculture goes. So the good news is yes, electroculture works. The great news is you don't have to create any of the complex structures that they show you in all the YouTube videos. I had no idea that the electroculture videos were so bad on uh, YouTube. The information is so bad because I don't like to make videos about something that a million other people are talking about accurately. But there are quite a few videos, but none of them are highly accurate in actually talking about the demonstrable and empirical principle behind electroculture. But it is nothing other than dielectric induction to cause osmotic uptake of mineral and water by the root system, but also too to stimulate the plant. No different than what's-his-face who 
you know, broke 20 bones in his body or whatever it was, and he hasn't moved his legs in weeks or months, and he sticks a TENS unit on his legs to cause muscle contraction. And Bruce Lee did that, where he'd just sit there on a the couch and hook up a TENS unit. It would actually flex his muscles, like, I don't know, 100 times a minute or something drastic like that. You know, you get a workout just sitting there. It's not the exact perfect analogy, but what you're actually causing is electrostatic or dielectric induction for osmotic uptake for better water and mineral uh, uptake by the plant, which of course makes it grow faster and better, bigger fruits, yada, yada, yada. But also too, by putting a Yagi array above it so that you're actually able to block out some of the stray EMF. But that's not what's causing the, the plants you know, to grow better. You're actually causing dielectric induction in the leaf and uh, the, this, depending on the type of plant, the actual central stem, where it's uh, transporting uh, water and nutrients to the leaves and to the fruits. It's like giving somebody a plant a massage, except electrostatically. And I don't know if you've ever been shocked by an electrostatic device. You actually feel invigorated. It might scare the heck out of you at first, and I'm not talking about a lightning, lightning strike. But this is what electroculture is in Simplex. I kind of hope I made that simple and you understand it. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. If you like this video, uh, you want to contact me, my uh, email's in the description below. Any donations are always warmly welcome. So that's electroculture. It is demonstrable, empirical, and it is logical, and it is not new age woo-woo, as I like to call it. Thanks so much for watching.